All right, good morning, everybody. It is 10.10 in the morning here on Saturday. Today is Kim and Dan's big day. And today is definitely a little bit more of a complex wedding, and I'm actually kind of starting some uh, different things. I'm actually starting on my studio camera today because I have a few additional things going on today. So first off, as I scroll over here, if you didn't see my last video, my RX105 uh, unfortunately bit the dust. Now this is still recordable. I could put an external monitor on it, but uh, one of the guests accidentally bumped into my tripod. Actually also bumped into my EV50. Luckily the EV50 didn't come down, but this did crack the screen and the screen is no longer functional. Now I could uh, try to kind of salvage this uh, somewhat. The screen, uh, from everything I could tell, is not replaceable. Uh, so that's kind of a uh, bit of dust in that regard. Uh, so unfortunately, this thing is going to go into the archive. And with the Sony Ev Commission, I have now picked up this Lumix GX85. Um, this is definitely a little bit more of a different camera than the Sony. So it's not quite as pocketable. It's a little bit larger, definitely a little heavier. Uh, this is your little bit more typical DSLR styled uh, camera. Now this is mirrorless uh, like the Sony. And uh, this does have a replaceable lens. So I actually picked up a very fast lens on this is an f17 um, I think this is a yep, 15 millimeter so if I'm not mistaken this is an equivalent of 35 millimeter on the camera I forget my math on this but being a micro four-thirds uh, camera has the bigger sensor so it should in theory pick up a bit more low light than a Sony unfortunately I could not find true one-to-one -one comparisons uh, between the two I could try to do some filming on the Sony but it's stuck in its last position and unfortunately um, it's just, I, I know I was pushing the extreme on it. I actually want to dial it back to give it a more fair comparison. Might try to play around with it just a little to get that uh, one for one. But overall, I'm hoping this camera will, uh, you know, come in in a pinch now and finish out the rest of the season. Uh, it's definitely not inexpensive. This is actually about the same price as a brand new uh, Sony RX5, uh, 6, or now 7. It was about uh, 1300 bucks with this particular lens. It actually comes with two additional kit lenses with it. And they're decent, but I need something super low light. So this is the rig I'm going with. So we'll see what the pictures look like in this film. Now beyond that, uh, I actually have a very complex uh, setup today where I'm at two locations. I'm at Wilderstein Mansion uh, for the ceremony where we have a 10 person choir, a soloist, um, individual readers. We have, of course, the groom and officiant being mic'd up as well. So six mics uh, complete. I actually had to uh, rent a pair of uh, 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 transmitters to uh, convert uh, two of my quarter mics over. I've done this a couple times in the past. It's worked pretty solid. Sounds exactly the same as my regular Sennheisers. It's same uh, type of capsule and all that. So that's going to be that setup. I also do have live performances at the reception as well. And the reception's at Beekman Arms uh, today. And they're relatively close, but there's logistics that you have to worry about. First, you know, I have to get to Beekman Arms first to do my setup because it will be only a relatively short gap between ceremony and reception. So I need to make sure my main uh, setup is ready, which is why I'm heading out a little bit early today head over to ceremony, get that set up, do uh, extensive uh, sound check for everybody, and then you know, wait for ceremony to happen, pack up, head over uh, to Beatman again, finish out the night. But uh, overall, today should be pretty interesting. They definitely have a large affinity to 80s music, um, so there probably won't be too much uh, older and newer in general creeping in. Very large uh, uh, kit component as well today, so it's going to be interesting trying to find those tracks that uh, some of the kids may have heard. Uh, you know, Toto for one, you know, because it got popular because of Weezer. Hoping uh, that plays well, but you know, we'll see how all that kind of goes throughout the day. You know, I'm, you know, I love the '80s. Probably a good 70% of my entire collection is the '80s. So I'm really hoping. The majority of the guests enjoy that as well. But that's you know, about it. I actually packed my van last night. It got very cold this morning. Uh, frost uh, today, it was 34 degrees. So everything with batteries did not go into the van. I've uh, got to finish packing that up now. I have to drop my kids off to my mother-in-law's and then head over for what's essentially about a 12-hour day today. So it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a little chilly. I'm hoping the wind uh, doesn't get too crazy because it'll be uh, about 58 degrees, if not mistaken, during a ceremony start. 
And uh, last time I hit that temperature, it was definitely getting uh, pretty chilly. My hands, especially uh, holding my iPad, uh, definitely exposed and definitely gets a bit on the uh, cold side. But we'll see how all this goes and let's roll with it today. All right, everybody, it is 12.01. So I got all this set up in about 45 minutes. I kind of take my time a little bit because this is my load-in area and there's just no access to get my cart in or anything like that. Luckily, my van is just right behind, uh, but it is definitely a tighter squeeze than I initially planned. Now, I've done a few weddings here already. This is definitely the tightest configuration I've had where I have tables um, front to the side. It's definitely going to be a crunch uh, for space, but you know, you have to work with what you work. I'm actually going to pan around the room here in a minute. I have one idea that I might end up doing um, a little bit, but this is site one right now which this is the reception uh, area i'm going to be heading over to site two which is the ceremony area in just a little bit i want to go over a couple uh, different different things for a configuration like this so first off you know very tight spot so i've actually skewed out towed out uh, whatever you would like to call it angled out my speakers i want to say it's probably about five to seven degrees in both directions so between the tables in front and of course, you know, just natural comb filtering as you get a little bit further out with certain frequencies. I didn't want that destructive property happening right here. So I wanted to spread it out a little bit. Now, with the speakers, I'm hoping it's gonna cast over enough of the area, but definitely because of the angle down on the column arrays, you know, these tables are gonna be getting the brunt of it. Now, I'm gonna be having uh, my Mauis in the room. I actually have a room over here that I'll pan over to in a minute. That's going to be part of the cocktail hour area that uh, at least one, if not both, my Maui's will be in. But now I'll reposition my Maui's in here. And I'm trying to be uh, strategic enough where I can keep this volume down enough where it's not uh, deafening uh, by any stretch. And that way I can carry my Maui's over in different parts of the room. I think I'm going to put one over in this far corner over here, and maybe one uh, closer towards the uh, head table. But uh, this is uh, what I'm dealing with today. Uh, what we also have, my standard setup. I'm still running virtual DJ. Uh, definitely got my smaller of the two setups for a configuration like that. I actually don't have my mics in here yet. Now, uh, I have a very uh, complicated both uh, mic requirement at the ceremony area and also uh, additional more than just one or even two mics in here. So I'm going to be running a six pack uh, mic up there. I'm going to be running four here. And since I need to do that all later, I've just got my mics in my car right now. I'll resound check those. When I get back here, I'll have probably about 45 minutes from leaving the ceremony site over here to reception uh, to do that sound check and do a little bit of sound check with the artists that are gonna be uh, performing during uh, the reception. But uh, let's give a quick pan of the room to show uh, the size. Um, it's definitely a uh, fairly small room in comparison to a lot of the other rooms I do deal with. So of course you have to uh, make around with that. But yeah, this is what we have today. So just as a point of reference, over here is where I load in. Matter of fact, you can almost make my uh, van right there. I'm going to pan over to the left here just a little bit. And the dance floor is just to the below of this camera shot. So this is one corner of the room, and I might put a Maui here. I'm debating. Um, it's either going to be here, or I might throw one kind of catty-cornered into here. It's going to depend if this table moves ever so slightly, and I feel that there's enough room in there. Uh, otherwise, you know, it is a pretty tight spot to put any type of sound reinforcement on these corners, but it's definitely going to be worth a try. As we pan over here to the left some more, we've got the cocktail hour area. It's kind of like an atrium styled room. This is one corner over here, the far corner. This is the head area. Of course, we have the fireplaces, the main uh, feature up here. Um, unfortunately, there's no power on either of these sides. So I am uh, stuck with, if I were to put any speakers over here, it would have to be my Maui's uh, just for the sake of power. we we'll keep on floating over here kind of an area that cannot really block too much, although the table is blocking it somewhat. This would be the in and out of the kitchen. And of course, back to my setup location. 
So as I mentioned, definitely a smaller room uh, that I'm contending with, so I don't have to necessarily go too loud on these. So I'm not as worried with uh, things in front of me, but of course they are gonna cancel out some sound. There's just no getting around the physics of sound. But between that and potentially putting some, uh, at least one or both of my Maui's out here as well to balance out sound, at least for dinner, I think that will cut through uh, what I really uh, would like to do for the night. But that's about it in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to be heading out in a little while over to the ceremony area and let's see how that goes. All right, everybody, I'm set up for a ceremony now. And what do we have going on here? So far, we have our two Maui five goes over here on each side of the crown. Of course, we have the choir is currently uh, sound checking and everything. I have three mics on them right now. Um, two of those mics are actually gonna get repurposed for mid-ceremony, where we're gonna have a ukulele player and a vocalist uh, performing then. I also have, of course, my Countryman E6 Flex over on the officiant, the Sennheiser MKE2 Gold on the groom. And like I said, just absolutely a gorgeous sight here. I'll give you a quick lay of the land over here. here to the left as you can see part of the reason some people choose this absolutely gorgeous site from out here and over here is where my setup is I actually do have a power cord running uh, this way and like I said that's just purely you know since we, I'm doing a long sound check and this could be a potentially long ceremony it definitely makes sense just to keep power going but other than that this is what we have going on for today again. As you can see behind me, uh, I'm finishing the edit on this video for Kim and Dan's Big Day. So how do I want to summarize uh, everything at this point? So first off, it's just a couple days uh, past. And uh, some thoughts about this. Yes, first, uh, having two different locations is, is definitely a little bit of a challenge. Even though there's some time in between, it makes for a much longer day. I think it turned to be a 12-hour day in total having to go to the reception site first and make sure everything's set up because there was a smaller gap of time between uh, when ceremony was going to end and also reception was going to start. So of course I wanted to make sure everything was set up and I wasn't going to have any issues. So day definitely started much earlier than typical. Um, it was also a big mic day you know, between the chorus, the, uh, the groom, the uh, officiant, the readers, and of course having to move uh, mics for the ukulele player and the uh, soloist when it came uh, towards uh, the middle of the ceremony. Uh, you know, that's, you know, you're, you're on pins and needles as a DJ. You want to make sure everything is perfect. And luckily for me, everything was uh, pretty decent. Now, I did have some problems tuning in some frequencies at the ceremony site. And I know I've had some problems uh, there before just finding frequencies. It's just a higher noise floor, I think, between elevation and location. It's just not uh, a, a really uh, high availability area of frequencies. And no doubt, it actually took me a couple scans to actually get six open frequencies in one group. I was almost starting to worry about, okay, now I gotta start doing my math, make sure I have proper separation 
if I actually have to use a couple of different groups. But luckily, after a little bit of tweaking, repositioning, I was able to get uh, six uh, open frequencies. And I didn't have any problem with any type of interference or anything like that. I did have an electrical outlet that I had available. And I always say, even though I have my UPSs, I'll always at least try to connect power where possible. I know I've had a few uh, comments uh, before if I just never hook up power at all. And uh, I'm always hooking up power uh, when possible. And uh, but I will still use my UPS uh, A to condition it. And of course, if something happens to uh, the power, I'm still good to go. And because of everything that was going on that day, doing a longer sound check for the choir, um, and I knew that the ceremony was gonna last a little longer than what some of my other ceremonies do last, I wanted to make sure I had enough battery life, of course. Now, this was actually, the ceremony was a little different than what I'm typically used to. It definitely reminded me of uh, uh, basically what my great-grandfather's wedding, uh, some pictures I had saw uh, from there. Maybe it is a little bit more older uh, Polish tradition or whatnot, but the first couple parts, the bride and groom actually sit down off to the corner as a uh, basically the tale of both families is told. And I've had similar uh, weddings, but definitely a bit more condensed. So this was a little bit longer in that uh, side of the equation. But, you know, just making sure that the sound just was really good. It was, you know, just so critical uh, for me. And uh, again, I think everything landed nice. I know I had a few comments as I was uh, wrapping things up of how good things sound. So it's always, you know, it, it instills a sense of pride uh, in me when I hear things like that. So the uh, ceremony to start a few minutes later than expected and uh, it ran over then a few more minutes than expected. So certainly glad everything was set up and checked over at the reception site. Uh, got there, um, everything uh, went off nice and decent. My Maui's were in the, uh, the atrium area for cocktail to start. I actually brought one Maui in um, and positioned it off a little bit just to help with things like speeches and all that, just to kind of even out the sound a little bit. Now, um, as you're not gonna see in the video, it actually took me a little while to get people uh, dancing, I think, between some of the food, uh, just the kind of general vibe from the day. It did take a little bit longer um, and I threw uh, the heavy hitters out there, the Billy Jeans, uh, September, things like that. And it did take a little bit to get them up. But, you know, I'll be the first to admit, not everybody is ready to always just, you know, just jump up and dance. Not every wedding is a big raging dance party. You know, I did throw a couple slow songs in, then a couple polkas. And uh, the energy level definitely uh, crept up a, a bit at that point. And I had a, a great night uh, from then on out. But... As a DJ, you know, these are the challenges that you are faced with sometimes. Uh, you know, how do you, you know, get people to dance when it's not necessarily that kind of vibe right now? Now, personally for me, I am not the hype DJ. I'm not getting on the mic and coaxing people on. Some DJs will say that's a negative. Uh, for me, I think that's just my particular style, and I know that's why a lot of couples hire me, is because I'm not that particular style DJ, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just, you know, you have to dig in a little deeper to try to find those uh, right grooves that might slowly uh, get people on there and then kind of build up uh, the crowd. Sometimes it's explosive. My, uh, my gig log just before that, that was 250 people and they were ready to dance all night long and that's what they did. This one just took a little longer uh, than expected. But, you know, uh, it was just a, a really good, solid night. Lots of uh, live entertainment. Again, they interjected six mics at ceremony. Ended up using uh, up to three mics during reception for a couple bits uh, that went on for that. But, um, you know, what can I say? Really uh, just happy with how everything kind of uh, played out for the night. And uh, this is where I'm at, so... I'm about to tack this on the end of uh, this video. I'm now down to three remaining uh, gigs for the uh, for my gig log. And I actually have one surprise that you might see right behind me. Uh, that uh, little thing has, uh, it's uh, coming at the end of this year as a new project. I'll have a video on uh, what that specifically is uh, going to uh, entail as uh, time goes on. But again, I hope you've really enjoyed this series and stay tuned for more.